All right, so we're back um, for another um, weekly episode of Game Creation, and we're going to tackle a really, really tricky one uh, this week, which will be Pac-Man. Um, I don't want to do just uh, our normal Monday um, planning videos, um, because I think that the meat in, in this channel is, is normally on the uh, Tuesday to Friday videos where we actually get to do something rather than just talk about it. Um, I have, uh, I'm trying to plan ahead these videos a little bit um, so that it's not just me waffling, which I'm doing now, I understand. Um, but um, I just want to say thank you very much for uh, the kind comments uh, that were made on the video I rushly put together last week. Um, essentially what happened with the channel is that uh, life took over, I quit my job um, and became full time on a website and a different YouTube channel which teaches uh, GCSE kids how to do maths uh, and so all of my time and energy went into that. Uh, I quit my job just before uh, lockdown which was a uh, really good timing since uh, they cancelled all the exams in the UK but anyway um, uh, that's going really well so I'm at a point now where I can start to, to do, try and do this a little bit. Uh, maybe not every week, but when I've got time, uh, I love use. I love doing this channel. This is a kind of passion project channel, uh, and I hope you enjoy it too. And from your kind words last week, um, it has definitely uh, got some viewers, which is good. Um, so today, well, this week we're going to be looking at doing Pac-Man, um, and the challenges. There's quite a few challenges. Um, first of all, the map is actually quite complicated. Um, it's not as simple as I'd want it to be, um, but we're going to be doing it from scratch. We're going to be uh, being inspired by the original, but we're going to be doing it properly from scratch. Uh, well, I say properly, but we're probably not going to get the nice curves that they've got, but that's fine. We are going to be doing it like we've done before with other projects um, as a kind of Excel spreadsheet um, thingy bob. Uh, where we can just load all the tiles in one go. Um, and what other issues? I don't um, envisage uh, Pac-Man being an issue. Uh, it should be quite easy to program because we've done it before where we just restrict the player's movement. Um, so when the player clicks right, they've got, they can only go uh, in certain... Um, they can only go right in certain positions. and We kind of manipulate where they can go uh, and when and we're probably going to animate the whole movement to the right to the next tile before they can change direction um, and that will stop them clipping the wall and having all sorts of problems um, and the the biggest challenge is something I don't think we've done before is kind of trying to figure out the AI of the enemies because it's not a very fun game if we're just collecting the dots um, we want uh, the enemies which I have no idea what they're called pinky and blinky and all those ones um, and we're going to be doing that um, probably in a different way that the original was done, which was the point of these. It's like, well, I don't want this channel just to be, let's do exactly what the programmers did at the time. Um, I want to try and figure out how we can do it in our own way, which might be the same way, who knows. Um, and I also want you to write in the comments if you have figured out different ways of doing things or any issues you've had when you've tried to kind of replicate these things on different games that you've created. So too much waffling, let's cut the waffling down and let's get started. So what I've done is I've found this wonderful resource called, um, or the, from the website, the Spriters resource. Um, and what we can do is we can just copy it and we're gonna import it into Photoshop. So if I click new in Photoshop, what it does is it, has this clipboard fun, uh, thing which will do exactly the same dimensions as on the clipboard so if I paste that in uh, that should load nicely now I don't want this completed board or the sprite board for Pac-Man just yet so what I want to do is I want to copy exactly this middle board and we've got to be really careful not to have any black lines around the side of it so if I copy that and again do a new clipboard and paste it should load like that. Now, this looks like this looks doesn't look like sprites at all, um, and so what I need is some way of visualizing this. Now, these games back in the day, back when Pac-Man was created, um, used eight pixel sprite sheets. So um, let's try and put some eight pixel grid lines on, and let's see whether we can see the sprites a bit better. Now, we might have problems figuring out the columns and rows to have. If we do two by two, that's not going to work. 
but if I look here at the side, it is 224. And so what I do is 224. And if we divide it by 8, we get 28. And so let's put in 28 rows. And let's do the columns. So 248 divided by 8 is 31. Now, I always get columns and rows mixed up. Um, and we need no gutter. And let's just switch over. So we don't want gutter. But gutter means there's like an offset. We don't want that. And it should, is that looking right? Or is it the other way around? See, I think it's the other way around. I think it would be 31 here and 28 here because it wasn't looking quite right. There we go. That looks perfect. So if I zoom in a bit and like that, we can see that actually these are repeating tiles. A lot of them are black and those are where the, the um, I don't know, the Pac-Man food will go. Um, but you can see it like these are all just reflections of each other. So what I need to do on Click Team is I need to just draw these in. Um, and so I'm going to sh probably show you uh, me doing a couple of them, but you kind of don't want to watch the whole thing. So I'm probably going to pause it, pause the recording and do that off screen. Um, so I'm going to start with this one and let's just open my Click Team. And what I'm going to do is just open an active. Now, one thing I noticed straight away is that the um, the the graphic is too small. It's going to look tiny on the screen. Um, so what I want to do is find a scale factor to use for all of it. And so if I go into the Photoshop file, it's 224 by 248. If I times it by 10, it wouldn't fit on a 1080 screen because 1080 is, what, 1920 by 1080. So it would be too big for that. It would be all right for my 4K monitor, but it wouldn't fit on a on a HD monitor. Um, so what I'm going to do is times everything by 5. So 224 times 5 is 1120, which is perfect. 248 times 5 is 1240, which is perfect. So that will make it so that I can see it on the screen. Um, and yeah, and I know that um, Click Team has scaling options, but for the graphics, we want to make sure we get the best resolution from them, I suppose. So what I'm going to do is just close that, and I'm just going to change the size of it. So I'm going to make it what is it? Eight eight uh, times five, which is forty. So I'm going to make it forty by forty. And actually, I can do the. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll do that later. I'll just do the graphics first and we'll worry about the size of the screen because we've got to put the score and stuff on as well. So we need to leave room for that. Okay, so we're going to start with that top right one, uh, which it starts in the middle, curves to the bottom, starts at the top, curves to the bottom. Uh, now those are one pixel, so using the conversion, I can make them five pixels, couldn't I? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my free brush and times it by five. Uh, now I want to make sure I get the um, the color just right. And you might have noticed that I have already done this before. And I just want to copy the color and put it into Click Team. And what it has the hexadecimal value there, so I can just paste that in. Perfect. Oh, just clicked accidentally. Right. And so I've got my size five. Now what I want to do is make sure I get exactly in the middle. And Click Team has a nice little function here which shows you the coordinates of the bit you're currently pointing at, even if you're off screen actually, which is really useful. So it's 40 high, so I want to start drawing at 20. And I want to start drawing at 20 at the bottom. And then I need to sort of a curve. And we're going to do a very rough job with these curves. <laughs> and I want one at the, there, one at there. And then we want to kind of do a curve. Oh, control Z to undo, and then nice little curve there. Okay, now um, what I notice on this is that there are four of these. In fact, there's probably more than four because there's these curves here as well. So this curve here and this curve here. Um, so there are there are quite a few of these. So um, I need some way of um, um, rotating this. So I need to do four of these effectively. So what I can do is I can control C. And 
We've done this before. Okay, so let's let's discuss this briefly because we've done this before. So when you've got when you're creating a tile set, it can be quite irritating um, having lots of different actives and trying to get the the Excel spreadsheet which says which graphic goes where to figure out which one you're talking about. A trick for this, and this isn't the only way, I'm not even saying this is the best way, but traditionally a trick for doing this is by using the direction as an index. And so if I up the directions, okay, and it creates 32 directions. I know the last index is 31 because the first one is zero. That index of the direction is really, really useful for using as an index of what graphic we want to load. So we're kind of cheating. We're using the fact the directions here as a kind of way of doing an index. Now, I don't know whether um, Click Team have created a better way of doing this. So please write in the comments if they have. But at the moment, this is the best way we've got. So we're just going to rotate this. And uh, where's my rotate? There we are. And I'm going to create um, four different, they're the same, aren't they? But four different, and I'm just going to copy that and rotate again. So there's our four different sprites. They're just the same sprite rotated. Now I need to keep track of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pencil tool. Oh, still got that open. I'm going to click yellow and I'm going to use the pencil tool. Now be careful to use the pencil tool. When you use brushes, it has a sort of anti aliasing rubbish. Uh, the pencil gives you a nice, um, nice stripe, and we've got one. And so this one is our zero piece. Um, I think this one was the one, so I've got to check that, otherwise, it'll muck things up later. So that's our one. And I'm just going to use this as a kind of resource of which goes where. So our three is going from the top to the left. So from the top to the left, so that'll be three down there. And then this will be a four. Okay, what I want to do is go around and just cross out. Well, I put dot maybe. I don't know. I haven't really thought this through. So I'm going to put a dot on all the pieces that I've now done. Uh, I don't think there are many actually and you're probably shouting that I've missed one I don't think I've missed any uh, I think that's it for that one so we've done that first piece okay next uh, I want to go through each of the other tiles um, I said I wouldn't do this on screen because it's probably going to be really boring watching me do it but I'm going to find a, a tile a unique tile and I'm going to um, Put it into my graphics i'm going to log the index on this and then i'm going to try and cross out all the ones that i've done um, this is going to be boring so what i'm going to do is pause it and i'll come back when i'm done see you then just briefly i've noticed the mistake you're probably shouting at the screen the bottom right one should be two because obviously that's the one that comes after one wow anyway see you in a sec um just wanted to um, highlight something so I want to show you this um, this is something that I've come into straight away and I know a way around this but some of you might not so this one is the uh, top one here so it's our number four and what I want to do is I want this one to be rotated to make our number five okay it's quite straightforward you would think so what I'm going to do is just copy this one paste it and rotate it now what's going to happen <gasps> It's clipped it. It's, it's got rid of the side bit. Oh, no. <laughs> so a way around this. I'm just going to control Z or maybe not. You can't even control C. Right. So I'm going to copy this again. Get rid of that frame. There we go. Right. And the way around this is dead simple. You literally just fill in the, the missing bit. So it just won't clip it. And then what you can do is uh, rotate it. And then you can undo that uh, and let's just get my fill brush undo that like that it's quite irritating I don't know why it does that uh, maybe there's a setting somewhere to stop it doing that I don't know anyway I'll see you in a sec so I'm nearly done with this <laughs> it's taken me about five minutes but anyway um, I just wanted to show that actually um, this part here if we zoom in has just this little part here um, and this is obviously you've got the door as well 
But this is um, quite common um, with um, computer game design where you've got uh, repeating patterns. And I'll reveal how many there are, which will probably be less than you think. Um, you'll have repeating patterns all over something like in, in a game. And then the programmer will think, oh, hang on, this middle bit's so important that we'll create a sprite just for this middle bit. So there's two sprites there, if I'll show you. There's this left-hand one and this right-hand one, which are absolutely unique and not used anywhere else. Um, you've got these corner pieces as well, actually. So you've got six tiles here that are completely unique and not used anywhere else on this map. Um, just to cut, just to get across that this middle piece is important, and obviously it's where the ghosts come out from when you get them, and etc. etc. I just thought that was an interesting point. Um, but again, I'll pause the video now, just finish off. There are much less um, tiles than you think. Have a guess how many tiles you think there are in total on this map. Okay, so I've finally finished, um, and yeah, uh, there are. 20 uh, different tiles. Now, I might have missed some. Hopefully, I haven't. Um, and we can see here that it's actually uh, 15 uh, until we get to this middle bit. Uh, so, five of the 20 are just used in this central part here, which is quite interesting. And I Imagine they probably had um, internal rows of going, why are we using a quarter of our graphics just on this middle bit? Okay, they probably didn't. Um, but it's just interesting that um, that they can make something that looks like it doesn't repeat at all. Because when you look at this map, you just kind of assume that it's um, um, like a, a baking graphic or whatever. You don't really notice the repeating parts. They've done such a good job with this. And you imagine in the arcades in the 80s, uh, walking and seeing this and going, oh, wow, this is this is something special, especially with all the dots, the moving uh, enemies and stuff. Uh, just incredible. So I'm going to stop there because uh, I think that's been enough for one video. Um, in tomorrow's video, I'm going to be doing that um, the uh, spreadsheet. Now, just get used to the fact that I will be um, promising a lot with these videos and probably um, having to put them over several videos. Oh, such is life. But I don't like um, videos being longer than 20 minutes because YouTube probably hates that, I'd imagine. Anyway, so I'll see you tomorrow. Mm.